Lord God, thank you so much for giving us this time together and bless us as we continue to discuss suffering. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. 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 Interesting, we were talking about, about collard greens and black eyed peas and now we're talking about suffering. <laughs> which which seems which, which seems and dancing and and cards. So you know, keeping in that theme, let's continue he to talk about that suffering. Is, he suffered a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's childhood. Yeah, it was a it was a tough life. What's that? What's wrong with collard greens and black eyed peas? He said they were awful and they were cooked in uh, salt pork. And yeah, salt pork. Greasy. Everything was greasy. Everything was greasy and greasy. And you know, spinach has that nice green, deep yes. green color. Yes. Collard greens, you know, looks like something the army wears. You know, it's <laughs> it's sort of olive. <laughs> oh yeah, what baby? Yeah, what baby? That's even a better one. What babies do in the diet? Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, our neighbor used to eat a lot of that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So weird. Yeah. 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 Um, but no. they were better. Huh? Bitter. It, I don't know. We were young. I don't know. <laughs> you, you ate what it was, you, you ate, well, you ate what, you, what was put in front of you. That's yeah. what we were talking about that, too. Nobody came and said, what would you like? What I would know, you like yeah, today? Yeah, you know, because it's whatever. Mind, I'll just run to Burger King. <laughs> yeah. 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 No what, in fact, that was, what was it? What, my... Mother told me early on that when they first got married, Dad, she gave brought something to him, and he said, "I don't like this." And I mean, this was a story she told us throughout our childhood, so she remembered it. <laughs> and this was a big deal, you know, that Dad didn't like something, and he learned his lesson, you know, from then on. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, so you keep your mouth shut and eat what's there. But we ate what Dad, you know, we ate what Dad liked. Yeah. He liked chipped beef on yeah. toast. He's big on it. Oh, we had a lot of chipped beef on toast. So Collard yeah. greens, yeah. fried ham. You always serve your dad first. Like that. Yeah. You guys do that? What's that? You always serve your oh, father sure. first. Well, now I'll just serve the kids first. Well, I, and, and you know, when we were... <laughs> get, the, get them out of the way. <laughs> well, and we were, when we were kids, uh, and we talked about it with parties, and this was dinner, too. You, at the dinner table, you didn't talk. If they asked you a question, you talked when they asked you a question. You know, how was school? And the answer they wanted was fine. You know, they didn't want details. Yeah. It was fine. And, and then you went on and they had adult talk. And, and you, but it wasn't like you sat there saying, boy, I wish I could say something. You just ate, that's the way it was. You just ate your dinner. We never you know? did that. We were allowed to talk at all. Oh, something we, we, we What's that? You want something out of your own walking out of it. Yeah, well, I mean, they, it was, it, you just didn't do it. And, yeah. of course, you called, I called my father, sir. You know, my mother, ma'am. No. I mean, that's what we did. Yeah. Uh, that my was father just did not out. like being called ma'am. Oh, my. When I came home from Alabama, I lived out there for three months, whole summer. When I came home, it was, yes, ma'am, no. Jesus, shut please don't do that. Oh. I said, I tell myself, I don't, I just do not like she being called ma'am. Uh -uh. Now, that was just, but everybody, I mean, it wasn't just us, all the kids, that's what they did, you know, and you called adults by their last name, you didn't, really, yeah, Mrs. Oh, so-and-so, well, yeah. or, you're you know, aunt. you never called, yeah. you never, you always said Aunt Edna, yeah, yeah. That, now that would, that was sort of the exception, well, my, my father, and then we got us, my father called his mother-in-law, uh, Mrs. McClannan, oh. you know, Mrs. McClannan, uh. forever, never called her mom. And I and I remember one time asking, why didn't you call? Because you know you hear on TV and yeah. And he says, well, she's not. And I said, what? She's not my mother. So I call her Mrs. McClain. Uh -huh. Well, why don't you call her? Her name was Jackie. They called her Jackie because I don't because she's Mrs. McClain. <laughs> you know, so uh -huh. that's what he did. And so I, with my mother-in-law. You know, I, I I have avoided calling her anything <laughs> for years. <laughs> you know, How you I, I, well, I, I just sp when I sp speak to her, I go to her. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. uh, but I, because I don't, you know, I don't feel comfortable calling her mom. Uh -huh. um, yeah. oh. But I, you know, first name it doesn't seem. I guess I'm old enough that that would be okay. But Debbie wouldn't want. I could do Mrs. Shadio, but she, Debbie doesn't want that. Uh -huh. So. You know, I've just sort of avoided, and she's kind of settled on a name for me, 
<laughs> him. Him. <laughs> him. Uh, so, so we've all we've worked out that relationship really well. Uh, we, we have talked about we've been talking about suffering, and we yeah, <laughs> we uh, uh, and I'm gonna have to erase what I just said uh, from the tape that I'm making <laughs> just in case. Uh, the um, uh, we've talked about suffering. We talked about you know how Paul wrote a to the Thessalonians about how they were suffering. And then we talked the next week about how Paul talked about his own suffering. And then last week we looked a little bit about how Jesus uh, suffered. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna kind of focus more on, on ourselves and, and how we end up suffering. And, and in the prior uh, sessions, particularly last week when we talked about Jesus suffering, the suffering that applied to us had more to do with suffering because of what we believe. In other words, suffering as Christians. It, Christians can expect some suffering in their life because standing up for what is right and true in a world that prefers darkness and untruth is sometimes risky, you know, and, and you're not always going to be accepted. Uh, and therefore, there's going to maybe some suffering. Did you all hear that? Mm -hmm. Don't okay. worry. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you never know. You, you just never know. Uh, the, um, uh, but there is suffering that happens, of course, most of our suffering, I think, doesn't occur because we've made a heroic stand. I mean, yeah. for me, that's just reality. You know, most of our suffering is the result of things some, often that we don't even understand. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about a little bit. And using, we're going to start by using maybe the best example of a person enduring suffering that he really didn't understand. And, and who would that be? Job. Oh, poor Job. Job. Poor, poor Job. So we're going to kind of look at Job as an example. And it's, it's interesting how the writer kind of develops the Job story. We're going to, we're going to do that, but we're going to take it maybe in a, in a slightly different direction, which I think may be even a better illustration of unexplained and unexpected suffering. And I think Job is a great example of how we deal with that. But anyway, so we're going to look at Job, and we, we're going to start by looking at the beginning of Job. Now, just as a little bit of background, Job's a, a, an interesting, interesting book. Uh, it, some people have suggested that the book of Job is actually a play was written as a play. And if you ever read the guts of Job, it's this wonderful poetry. It's beautiful Hebrew poetry, uh, written very late. It's a, it's a late work um, because of the language that they, they use in it. It's, there's a lot of Aramaic in Job, uh, which is the Hebrews use that late in their history. Wonderful poetic structure. But if you look at it, it'll have the different people speaking. You know, like you were looking at a script, and you have Job's friends, and then said so, and then Job would respond, almost like you're looking at a, at a script. And that's what some people have suggested that Job was written to be read narratively by a group of people, so not unlike a, a play. I don't know whether it was, and it really doesn't matter. It's this wonderful poetic, uh, wonderful poem that has an introduction and a conclusion sort of tacked on that doesn't seem all that related to the, the poetry it, itself, you know, because the introduction and conclusions are not poetic. They're, they're narratives. Uh, so whether they were added a little bit later to put it into context or not, don't know that's been suggested just because the structure's a little bit different. But the introduction, even more than the conclusion, really points, I think, says a lot about suffering. And that's what he picks up on right at the beginning. Uh, in chapter 1. So let me read chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 6 of, of Job, and it's there in your book. Uh, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from roaming about on the earth and walking around on it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not 
made a hedge over about him and his house and all he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands and the possessions have increased in the, or his possessions have increased in the land. Put forth your hand now and touch all that he has and he will surely curse you, you to your face. Then the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power, only do not put forth your hand on him. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord. Now, this is a little part of the introduction to, to Job. Um, and what, what happens, what is happening in this little introduction? It's a, a testing. Okay, we've got, we've got a testing. Well, tell me what's, what's going on. Give me like a summary of, of what's happened in, in what we read right at the beginning of Job. Satan wants to prove that he can cause Job not to be the uh, 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 loving child. Of okay, okay, so we've got God there, right? Mm -hmm. And we got Satan showing up. And we don't know anything about Satan in, in Job. I mean, he's just a figure that shows up. And, and he, what does, what does God say? Because Satan shows up and God asks Satan, where you been? And Satan says, what? I've been roaming around the world looking at things. And God says, oh, well, I'm glad you said this. Have you noticed Job? And why does God say to Satan, oh, by the way, have you noticed Job? What does God say about Job? That he is a good, God fearing Job man. is a good, God fearing man. So when, when God is talking to Satan, he's doing what with Job? What does he appear to be doing uh, with Job? Yeah. Oh, uplifting. Okay, almost bragging about it yeah. a little bit, you know. So, uh, you know, sort of like you know, parent might do with the child. Mm -hmm. You know, have you seen? You know, have you seen Maggie? Boy, is she doing well? Da 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 da. And you yeah. say, Yeah, I've heard it before. <laughs> uh, uh, but that's that's kind of what what God is saying. Mm -hmm. Now, now, how does Satan respond as God is bragging on Job? How does Satan respond? He said that you you. Yeah, oh, uh, that Job is so faithful to God because God has given him so much. He has wealth, he has cattle, he has children, and he's having a happy life. Yeah, and, and so it's pretty easy yeah. to be faithful and blameless That's when, when you got everything. Yes. You yeah. know, if you're born with a, a silver spoon in your mouth, uh -huh. you know, it's pretty easy, you know, to be a nice guy, you know, if you've had everything you wanted. But if you what? Lift all that touch. If, if you take all that stuff away. All the protection. All that protection and all those blessings and all that stuff. You take that all that stuff away. What do you got? Yeah, what do you got? What And what does he say you're going to get? You take all that away from Job. What are you going to get? He'll still love me. Well, God says that. Does yeah. Satan yeah, say, say, you do this and oh, yeah, God still, oh, he's, he'll still, you and Job will be like that. And he'll curse his He'll say, you, he'll curse your name. Yeah. He's going to curse your name. And God says, well. It's in your power to. Yeah, well, and, and this is, I, one of the reasons I think we got to be always careful when we put too much history, you know, say, well, this is a history, historical event. There was a person there. And this conversation, this is a pretty, pretty rotten thing God does, right? Because what does God do? And that's why we don't, I, I, I think we get really screwed up if we say, well, you know, God did this to a person. I, I think this is a story. And, and we read it as a story. So I, I don't think there was a guy named Job that God did, because this is, God's really doing something Pretty, mean. Well, man, and, and doing it for, you talk about cynical. I mean, this is sort of the ultimate cynicism here. This is a horribly cynical thing. Well, uh, uh, you know, it's like a bet between God and Satan, and Job is like a pawn. Okay, you take everything away from him and say, Lord, have mercy. I hope God and Satan aren't having that conversation about me. You know, that's, that's pretty bad. 
And, and so what ends, up, what ends up happening? Now, it doesn't mention it here, but what ends up happening with Job? He loses his cattle, he loses his children, he loses his wealth, he just everything. loses everything. He, he loses everything. And, and, you know, again, reason I caution, let's not look at this as a history, historical. You, what, happens to his, what happens to his kids? They die. They die. His servants die. You know, an invader kills his servants. You know, steals his cattle. His kids are having a party in a house. And what happens to the house? Falls on him. It collapses in on him. And who allowed that to happen? God. That's why I always had a hard time with Job. Yeah, that's why. And I, I think that's a good thing. I think everybody should have a hard time with Job. And that's why I'd say, don't read it as history. Read it as a, as a story that's setting up something bigger. This is just setting it up, you know, setting up that long poetry. Uh, because something, and we're going to talk about that right now as we think about Job, because I think the poetry is kind of interesting, what ends up happening, which actually may help us deal with suffering better than assuming that Job is this incredibly faithful person. So he does that. Everything is taken, he loses everything, right? Mm -hmm. Except his wife, Lucky Job. Uh, you know, because he's still got his wife. And, and Job, um, his wife does what wives do and taps him on the shoulder after all, they lose everything. Uh, and his wife says, you remember what she says to him? And it says, yeah, I think it's time for you to curse God. You know, I, I think it's time for you to curse God. And Job says, no, I'm not going to do it. You know, I came into the world with nothing. I'm going to leave the world with nothing. So I'm not going to curse. The Lord give it. The Lord. Lord, take it away. Which is exactly what his wife wanted to hear. You know, I'm sure she was thinking, thank you, Lord, that I have hitched my wagon to him. You know, the guy who says, well, I came with nothing, I'll go with nothing. Well, you know, what about me? You know, I didn't make this deal. Uh, so she, he says that, and and if you read, continue in the first and second chapter, Satan shows back up to God. And God says what to say? He says, yeah, that's exactly what he says He's to say. He says, ah, na, 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 na. you were wrong. Job was faithful. And what does Satan say? Well, think about it. What would you expect? Even if you don't read know the story, what would you think Satan would say? So Satan goes to God, and he, God says, have you seen my, my guy Job? And Satan says, well, Job only loves you because you're giving him stuff. You take the stuff away, he ain't going to love you no more. And God says, I tell you what, you take away his stuff, you'll see. And so Satan takes away his, his stuff, right? Including his kids to get slaughtered, crushed in a house, and his servants to get slaughtered. You know, they take away all his stuff. And his wife is saying, hey, I love you, hon, but you got to curse that guy. Uh, and Job says, nope, not going to do it. Came to the world with nothing, leave the world with nothing. I'm still, I'm still God's man. And so scene changes. God and Satan are talking. Satan comes up to God and God goes, what does, she do? what does he do, Donna? Na, 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 na. You were wrong. Job still loves me. And Satan says, well, all you did was take away his stuff. Remember, you, you told me I couldn't touch him. So I just took, took away all the other stuff. You let me take away all the other stuff. If you let me touch him, hit him where he really lives, then he'll be cursing you. And God says, well, heaven forbid, don't take away his wife. And so Satan says, no, I'm not talking about his wife. You know, you, you touch him. You make him sick. He's going he's to curse you a blue streak. And God says, try it. go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and try it. And you'll see. And so what, does, what, does, what happens to Job? He gets sick. He gets... He, he gets really, really sick. Mm -hmm. and But not just sick. He's suffering. 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 He, he is nasty sick. 
You know, understand he's got nothing. Uh, and in a time when there's no health care. You know, he's got nothing. And he's got these weeping souls all over his body. And evidently, and I think that's what they do, still do in hospitals now, when you have weeping sores, uh, they take pottery and scrape them. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that what they do? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The broken dishes. Broken dishes, yeah. They, they take it. <laughs> Except now they, I think they use plastic nut spoons. You know, but uh, they, he was scraping you know, his open weeping sores with pus. I like that pus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, with, 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 with pottery. And, and his, his wife says, well, you, you, you are in, you're a mess. <laughs> you know, you're, you're a mess. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you better get on to, to cursing God. And that's when the poem starts because three of his buddies show up. And Job, now this is really suffering. Now, what has caused Job to suffer? Satan. Well, Satan has, but from Job's perspective, well, Satan and God, because it, yeah. it appears as though Satan can't do anything unless God says okay. it's okay. So, you know, we don't want to let God off the hook because, you know, he, he may not have pulled the trigger, but he sure as heck loaded the gun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, you know, Job is, from Job's perspective, we know the story about God and Satan, and if that didn't make you uncomfortable, you know, read it again, because it makes me uncomfortable. You know, that this is God and Satan playing the game, you know, with, with Job. From Job's perspective, but I think that's part of the deal, that this is happening. From Job's perspective, why is he suffering? He's suffering for God, but he doesn't know why. Yeah, well, this is the problem. <laughs> Job knows what? What does Job know about himself? He doesn't sin. That he doesn't yeah. sin. That Job, is, and I and we'd say don't sin, I, I don't mean, yeah. you know, perfect yeah. like Jesus did. Yeah. I'm talking about, he, he wasn't going out doing nasty things to people. He was a what? Faithful. He was a faithful, faithful servant, of God. servant of God. He was a righteous man. Did he know it? Yeah, he knew it. Heck, he knew it. He knew the life he lived. Jeez, when he lost everything, he was still faithful. So he knew he was faithful. Now, we know... He, something he doesn't know. We know all of this is a result of a conversation, you know, with God and Satan. You know, but does Job know it? No. Heck no. So he is a righteous man, and what, what assumption seems to lie in the back as, as Job starts talking and his friends start talking? Well, even before that. When the friends, Job is there and he's suffering, and he doesn't know. He doesn't understand he why. He doesn't understand why. He doesn't understand why. And what does Job want to do? Now, understand, when we suffer, in our suffering, sometimes we understand why, right? Sometimes we understand why. But still, we don't understand exactly why. You know, I, we don't know exactly why we're suffering. I mean, if somebody smokes for, for 50 years and gets cancer, you say, well, he got cancer because he smoked for 50 years. But other people don't. Mm -hmm. You know, why is that me? Why is that somebody that I love? I mean, why? You know, is, is the suffering... Why, why do I have to say goodbye to somebody that I love too soon? You know, my Debbie lost her father at, at 63. Lord have mercy, 63. Why? He was blind for crying out loud. It's not like he, he had an easy life. You know, he was blind. You know, why? Why why would that happen? And he died of cancer. You know, why? So there's a lot of things in 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 life that you look at and, and either we're suffering or other people you, we don't we don't know why. And it's not like they're stinkers. Because they are faithful service. Fundamentally good people. Not perfect, no. but fundamentally good people. And yet we suffer. And they suffer. And we just plain don't know why. why. We just plain don't know why. Now, if we're sitting there and they're suffering and we don't know why, who are we going to ask? How are we going to get an answer? If we don't know... <laughs> okay, maybe God may be able to explain it. 
He goes, God is supposed to what? Know everything. So maybe God understands why we're suffering. And you know, when you read Job, what does Job want? Just to love God and live his life. Well, I mean, after he suffers, he, all of this has happened and he's suffering. He's scraping sores with pottery. Jeez, wheeze, because it's oozing everywhere. All Job wants is to rejoice and praise God. He want, well, he wants to do that. But it's hard to do it when you're scraping. Yeah. He wants to do what I would want. If I'm in his position, be angry. I would want what? Get better. I would want to get better. Sure, I'd want to get better. I'd also like to know why. why? You know, why is this happening? I want God to explain to me why a righteous person is going to it. God, why do good people suffer? Why do bad things happen well, I, I, to good people? I think this story, Job, affected me so, so much I was really, it's always upset me, the story. It sure, yeah, right. And uh, part of it was why did God make a bargain with Satan when he knew, you know, who, who Satan was and what he wanted? Why would he make a bargain right. like that? Why would he even, you know, put Job up, right. go through all of that suffering when he was such a faithful... Right. And I think that's, that should... And that's why I really want to encourage you to read it as a story. It, not as anything related to fact. It is just a story. And all of that is to set up the fact that Job is suffering and Job Still doesn't know why. why. What he does know is he doesn't deserve it. What he knows is he doesn't deserve to suffer. Because he's been a righteous and he has done everything he's supposed to do, right? And the Proverbs, if you read the Proverbs, what do the Proverbs say? If you live a good life, what will happen to you? What do the Proverbs tell you? If you, if you raise a child in, in the right way, what's going to happen to that child? He'll follow. He'll follow. If, if, you, if you give to other people, what will happen to you? They'll give back to you. So if you do good, you will receive good thing. If you are faithful, God will bless you. That's what the Proverbs say. If if A A equals B and B equals C, A will C. Always. Hundred percent of the time. And that's how Job has lived his life. That's how he's lived his life. And it seems like that's right. He's been a righteous man in what's happened to him in his whole life. To the, to, the, to the time before this conversation between God and Satan, everything turned out right, right? Mm -hmm. It seems as though righteous people are happy mm -hmm. and evil happen. people are miserable. That might not happen to you, die, though. Ah. <laughs> yeah. so, but here in this life, Job is... And yeah, that's really interesting because you look at the story of uh, Lazarus and the rich man. And that was the whole point of the Lazarus and the rich man. One got everything during his life and the other got nothing. And the scales were reversed later. Job. Job wants, all he wants is, and he says this, I want God to explain this to me and then I'll die. Then I can go at least in peace because God explained to me why this is happening. And what do his friends say? Oh, and they're good friends. What do his friends say? They keep telling him this. Well, what do they tell him? Which is, which is, th this tells us the point of Job. What do his friends keep on telling him? That he's done something he's wrong. He's done yeah. something wrong. You had to have sinned. Yeah. You know, you had to have done something wrong. In fact, you were hiding it from yourself. But God knows everything. So he knows, you know, he knows that you've been telling lies. He knows. He knows you've been cheating. He knows. You won't admit it, but he knows. And if you admitted it, what? Things would turn around for yeah. you. So you're not being punished. You're not, you're not being punished. You're being punished for something you did. Your suffering is a result of punishment. And Job says over and over again, shut up. He tells him, he says, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. And you know what? They don't know what they're talking about. They say, you know, he says, no, I've lived a righteous life. And as it goes on, 
And the friends do it three times. And then Job every time says, you know what you're talking about. Only gets stronger every time. You know, and then the, a fourth guy comes by, and he is really all he's nuts, you know, because he goes into, oh, God is a God of justice, and God would never allow this to happen to an innocent person, therefore, and he is really off the deep end. And Job doesn't even answer him because he's 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 lost the he's lost the plot, you know. And after he's answered all his friends, now how does after he answers all his friends? who say, you've done something wrong, and he's given an answer to every one of them. Then he turns his face to God. I love this in Job. And Job starts talking directly to God. And what do you think Job is asking God? Why? Why? That's what it is. He asks him, why? Just why? You're God. Come down and explain it to me. Just come down and explain it to me. And God responds, and it's out of the whirlwind. The voice out of the whirlwind. And you know the first thing that God says when he speaks out of the whirlwind? He says, were you there when I laid the foundations of the universe? Were you there? And then he, God goes through all this. Uh, were you there when I spread the stars in the sky? Were you there when I caused the mountain goat to, to skip on the hill? Were you there? And that's all God says. Job wants to know why he's suffering. And what does God tell him? In essence, he spends two chapters doing it. What does God tell him? You don't need to know. You don't need to know. In fact, you can't know. You're not smart enough to know. But I'm God. He never says, oh yeah, Satan and I had this conversation and he was, we are testing your faith because that would have made it easy. You know, would have made it bad. But, more but, but, but God says, I'm God and, and, and you're not. And sometimes bad things happen. Sometimes bad things happen. And how does Job respond to that? He still praises. He says, he says, you're right. I, I shouldn't have asked why. Because there's some things we just don't understand. Because I'm not God. And sometimes we just can't understand things. Now, how, how, in just in 30 seconds or less, how can that help us deal with suffering? Now I'm taking the end of that, Job. We're not looking at the end. Because the end, that end that was there. Then God blesses him and Job gets all his stuff back. And, uh, and, and that's fine. You know, and that's fine. But I don't think that helps us with suffering. Because that seems to infer that, you know, in the end you're going to get everything if you're good. And let's face it. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen in the real world. How can Job? one of the most powerful books in the Bible. I had a friend of mine that said, if you wanted to take books, if you could only have three books from the Bible, if that's all you could have, he said, I'd take Romans, I'd take Mark, and I'd take Job. If I had those three books, I have all I need. What is it? How can Job help us deal with the suffering we face in the real world. Keep your faith. Yeah. What's that? Keep your faith. Keep okay, we can keep our faith. What else? As I'm, because as I'm, as we struggle with suffering, you know, we we ask, why? 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 How can Job help us with that? Well, Job can do it. Why can't we? Yeah. 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 If Job can do, it. and and. Did Job do it? Well, one, I love the fact that Job, you know, we talk about the faith of Job. Oh, the faith of Job. What did Job want? I want God, you, to come here and answer me. Now, is that, is that faithful? I mean, if that's not that mushy, oh, whatever you say, I believe. Oh, you're so great, whatever. Job doesn't do that. He says, God, I want you here. I want an answer. Yeah. That's what he says. Man, if Job can do it, then it's okay for us to do it too. So if we're suffering, it's okay to go to God and say, why are you doing this? This ain't right. 
This ain't right. It's okay to do that. And you could be angry with them. God, yeah. why the heck? I had a friend of mine in, when I was in, in Montana. And she, uh, she was, I may have told you this before, she was on vacation. And a, a friend that she had had from childhood, and this woman was in her 50s, she'd had this friend. They grew up together in this small Montana town. Uh, Maurice, and that was her name. I don't know why she was named Maurice, but Maurice was on vacation while she was gone a week on vacation visiting her son. Friend dies. Unexpectedly dies. While she's on vacation, this friend she's had since kindergarten or elementary school dies. And I remember her saying, I went to my pastor and I said, I said to him, because she didn't go to my church. She was Lutheran. Everybody's Lutheran. Uh, and she said, she said, I went to my pastor and I said, why did she do this? I'm really angry at God. Why did God do this? And the pastor said, oh, don't be angry at God. Don't be angry at God. God had nothing to do with this. Don't be angry. And she came to me because I, well, I dated her daughter for a short time. And, yeah, I did. Uh, and, but we were close anyway. Yeah, even when I stopped, we were still close. Uh, I said, well, I don't want to criticize your minister because he's your pastor, and that's important. I wouldn't say that. If you want to be angry at God, be angry, be angry at God. I mean, God's big, that's right, God's big enough to take it. And if we believe God is in control of everything, then, then he's in control of this. So you be angry all you want. You ask any questions you want, as long as you remember Job. Because the lesson of Job it isn't don't be angry at God. The answer is, sometimes the answer for suffering is, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. But I'm still God. You may not know why you're suffering, but I'm still God. And I'm still in control. And like you said, Alice, you know, although Job doesn't say it, God doesn't say it, sometimes you're not going to see it now. Sometimes you're not going to see it now. And I think that's the lesson of Job that we can take as we deal with suffering. Any questions? Then i got to work in three minutes. So let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us this time together. Remind us that when we suffer, it is okay to be angry at you. Uh, in fact, you'd rather us be angry at you than to try to repress it and pretend like everything is great. You want us to be honest. So, and they give us the freedom to be angry with you, but also remind us that sometimes they just don't answer. And help us to live with the questions. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. I thank you.